I've been asked to do a little video a few times about how you would make cordage and I'm going to use this corn silk as an example. You could strip these dried leaf sheaths off of a corn of co uh, ear of corn and tear them down into similar things. But this one's a bit brittle so I'm going to use this. It's a bit damp for actual relatively use and you'd probably dry it out a little bit more if you were going to make it permanent string for good regular use or reuse um, if you make stuff out of green or still that material it runs the risk of shrinking as it dries pulling away from each other so what I'm doing I pinched it about an inch and a half away from each other rolling towards me with one finger and thumb away with the other and we'll just keep doing that and you'll notice it starts to form a coil so as you move it together, you'll know this little eye here. So I'm going to hold that with my left hand, turn it to the side. From this point on, my left hand really is just uh, controlling tension as we move, and it'll move down the length. So my right hand, I'm going to roll that away from me, pinch, pull it towards me. Moving the top strand to the bottom by moving it towards me, or moving the bottom strand away. And every time we go, we roll, so roll away, hold steady, pull over the top. Roll away, hold steady, pull over the top. Roll away, hold steady, pull over the top. So you're rolling away from you. This is the why it's called the double twist cordage technique. So just so you've got a bit more example. There you go, and you end up with this nice, even twisted thickness cord. Now as you go, obviously we're going to run out quite quickly here and use your fingers to feel the thickness of your material if you haven't torn everything into even strips or in this case if you've got strands like this you simply line up the good thing about this kind of um, cordage making as well is that when you release your tension with your left hand it doesn't undo what you can find is if you've got one strand thicker than the other one will simply coil around the other while the one will straight and that obviously reduces your strength because you've got not as many fibres resting on each other and pulling away from each other and into each other at the same time. So in that case I will, instead of just move my left hand down, I might hold and I would twist and twist, creating a sharper turn. That's not necessarily, no, it's not often necessary, but it just get used to the materials you're working with. You try and overlap by about three inch at a time, if you can. I'm making an example here, so I'm, I'm going a little bit short on that. I'll just add in this strand again. So again, I'm lining it up. This is a good example to, uh, material to practice with. You can use corn leaves, you can use straw. You can even just use two little pieces of string And there we go. Not the neatest cordage you'll ever see. But it's a quick example. That's easily done. And you can simply keep splicing more fibres in and go on and on and on as much as you want. Right, that's already taken just shy of four minutes. So hopefully that's educational. Um, if it's confused you even more, hopefully you'll find a better video than mine. But that's a double twist reverse cordage strand technique, um, which makes a more evenly controlled thickness strand, as far as I'm concerned, than say a thumb roll or palm roll or a thigh roll technique, which creates a bit of a looser cordage. Now obviously, like I say, this is corn silk, this is green material. This will dry looser than it will be ideal for actual practical use but as an example it's good and you've always got these to play with okay happy forward happy cordage making bye